Our work is uh, really focused on understanding how the genome, after it is copied, is accurately distributed to the two daughter cells in every cell division. So, for example, in a human body, there have to be hundreds of billions of cell divisions occurring, and we want to understand how in each of those divisions, the genome or the software of the cell is properly copied and distributed. And that's essentially what we try to understand. And from a disease perspective, this is a process that is known to be defective in cancer cells. And so we also want to link our understanding to the origins of genomic instability of cancer cells. My main advice is to be really passionate about the problem that you study and also to be not afraid of going away from the pack. So to work on problems or systems which are not necessarily popular or widely accepted. And I think it's important to distinguish yourself or discriminate yourself from the rest of the field by really pushing your own agenda. My answer to this is, of course, yes. Science is essentially a fundamentally a humanitarian activity because we are interested in developing understanding that will aid humanity. And I think it's always been humanitarian in the sense that scientists are among the most collegial, collaborative people. It's a community that spans borders and backgrounds and cultures. And I think it's sort of a model for how human society can work where ideas and uh, new insights spread very quickly and really lead to new development of scientific areas, new models for studying all kinds of aspects of the world around us. So I believe science does already have a strong humanitarian character to it and we of course need to maintain this in the future. I think the most challenging uh, question in the future is to do with cancer and cancer biology in that we've come to realize that cancer is really a, a, really a systems biology problem, a problem where the large scale circuitry of the cell is altered. And with all the efforts going on now, we're getting a sense of exactly what the genetic and epigenetic changes in cancer cells are. But it's going to take an enormous amount of effort and development of essentially new ways of tackling the problem to link this new information to understanding why cancers, where cancers come from and why they are so detrimental to human health and also how we can tackle them in the clinic. So the use of new technologies to attack the problem of cancer is really the major um, challenge I think in the near future.